Yet another episode is ready for you guys. 3D True Fist, Balanced Steady State, Free Possession with ECG, Respiratory Triggering, coming up. Such a beautiful day out here today, sunny and everything. It's a little bit cold, but however, it's all good. So for those who are new, my name is Bakken again, and I'm, uh, I'm a riot radiographer. In my channel, I cover everything from basic to advanced, tips and tricks. So today, I'm really looking forward to make this video uh, regarding 3D Trifisp, how to plan it and perform it. And this video does not cover how to optimize the sequence itself. And uh, people have been asking me how you can perform the sequence uh, in a proper way. So I've been thinking about making this video and uh, well here I am and I'm looking forward. 3D Trifis can be difficult and also easy. Because it's very patient related and it's not like every other sequence. This is just an example of having a good sequence in your hands. And if you're using it wrongly you will get bad results. It's not like every other sequence. Let's say for example a knee sequence where you just perform it from the start to the end and you will get consistent good images if you position the patient correctly and use the coils correctly. So this sequence, uh, 3D True Fisp, is used for a thorax area where you want to highlight uh, the aortic arch, coarctation cases, or even covers the whole heart, like uh, uh, for the anatomy and for the coronary arteries and so on. So we use the sequence a lot for congenital heart diseases because in those cases it can be very difficult. The anatomy is uh, away from uh, normal. So we use the sequence very early in a protocol just to highlight the anatomy and get better understanding of the anatomy before we proceed on with the cine functions and uh, so on and so on. Without further ado, let's get into it. Hey guys, we are at the scanner. I'm going to show you how I do it when it comes to planning a 3D truth is. I will not talk about optimizing the sequence itself in this video. However, in front of you, you have a localizer which is already scanned where you see a sagittal, coronal and a transversal plane. So first things first, there's a few factors where I find important whenever using a 3D truth is. Patient positioning is important because uh, the chance of lying still increases during the exam. The next I find is uh, patient information because without the cooperation with the patient, we will be more likely to get suboptimal images. So a patient who knows what's going on, will like to be more motivated and trying to do the best during the scan. This is just something to have in mind. ECG is another important factor and a very ne much needed in the, the sequence. With a bad ECG, you should just stop the scan and try to get a better one before continuing. A bad ECG will lead to bad images. So the last one, the system reading is important due to the navigator of this sequence. This uh, sequence rely on uh, consistent breathing. All right, let's go. So um, I use a senior standard sequence where I do as a free breathing. You can see there in the second uh, sequence in the protocol. So uh, I add up with it, uh, two to three next averages and I use 60 calculated phases. I will explain this calculated phases soon. So planning of this scene is in direct transversal as shown there. Where I can see the area for right coronal artery RCA as shown. So while this is running, we just wait for the image. So uh, this is where we can change the calculated phases. Uh, 60 calculated phases is important because you will get more accurately uh, trigger time during this scene. So let's say you have uh, 20 calculated phases, then you get trigger time with uh, 100 and the next will be 150. This is just an example. So you will miss what is in between this range. But if you have a 60 phases, you will get a trigger time of let's say 100, 120, 140, 160 and so on. This was just an example. In other words, it will be more correctly when you need to find a quiz time of the heart, quiz, quiz time, quiz time, damn that's a difficult word to pronounce. So let's check the final results of the scene free breathing. Uh, sorry, the true fist opened itself because it's next in line. And uh, let's close uh, this one a little bit. As you can see here, uh, with this scene free breathing, we want to find a kissing time. So in other words, we want to find the time where the heart is mostly still. That's why we want to sample. We need to find when the 
when we can start sample and for how long the duration so uh, I would take the image in a bigger screen here you see that's the word I'm trying to spell quizzing time so uh, in here we can scroll the images up and down to check where the heart is lying still usually I uh, scroll um, uh, the images all the way down and then I uh, scroll back and while looking at the area of the RCA when it's moving and when it's mostly still this can be a little bit difficult when doing the first time but uh, doing a few times you will get uh, used to it in this example the house is standing still at around uh, 650 so we scroll through to check when it starts to move again look take a closer look at the, look at the images So until uh, around 800. What we have here now it's an important information when the start and the end of uh, the trigger time. So uh, this is where we're um, gonna do some uh, mathematics. It's very easy. So um, we have the start 650. The end is around 800. So 800 minus uh, 650 is around 150. What in the world does this mean? So we have the start 650 and 150 is the duration of it that's for how long you can sample so now we know where we can start and for how long let's note uh, that because we're going to need this uh, these numbers for later when we uh, are planning the true fisp so uh, we're going over to the true fisp pretty soon so let's open the true fisp there yeah. in this example i position the 3d true fisp as uh, oblique sagittal with the main goal of highlighting what the arch and its surrounding structures as seen in sequence number 3 in line is running, that's a localizer done as free breathing. The reason I use this free breathing localizer is because I know exactly where the liver position will be when the patient is breathing freely. So whenever localizer is finished, I use this one for positioning the 3D true fist in the general positioning and the navigator. You can of course do this now localize early in the protocol and it doesn't matter where you in line you put this sequence but uh, this as first sequence you have to keep in mind that the patient can breathe a bit heavy or inconsistent which can be normal when they are a bit exciting or maybe anxious so while later in the exam they will be more, more or less able to find a calm and which gives a more correctly free breathing localizer so the free breathing localizer is finished now and now use this one now as a planning the further planning for the true fist by the navigator itself so I adjust the angulation and the slices and how much I need to cover the anatomy of interest. After the planning of the sequence, I usually go for the navigator. For the navigator positioning, I usually scroll in the corner plane where the top of the liver is the highest. I put half the navigator in the liver and half of it in the lung. I see. Remember to check this in two planes. In this case, I use the coronal and then the transversal. The next thing I do is I go for the extra shimming, uh, also called the green box or B0 shimming. I adjust this accordingly to the cardiac, also in two planes for better homogeneity. So after this, I go for ECG. Move your mouth over the trigger delay, you will get uh, important information like day the window duration and the day the window starts. So as you can see in here, we found earlier with the scene free breathing the start at 650 and the duration of 150. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to tailor this to uh, the trigger delay of this patient. So being able to adjust the trigger delay as I wanted, I uh, sometimes uh, go into an acquisition window and adjust add up for around 1000. This will open uh, possibilities to uh, to go further on with uh, adjusting the, the start of this. Uh, trigger so you can see here I am adjusting it and I hover my mouse over it for an update to see exactly where I wanted to have uh, around 650 and the next thing I want to do now is to to uh, have the duration part that's the segments segments controls that So uh, we are just segments uh, till around 150. So also move your mouth to uh, get the information. 
So one thing I want to mention before we go on with the next step, uh, the heart rate. So the heart rate uh, changes the R into one. That means in other words, if you have a high heart rate, the R is closer, which means shorter duration time and longer scan time basically. And vice versa, longer heart rate gives longer R interval and also longer duration time and shorter scan time. So making this easy, if you have a shorter duration, that means that you sample less. Also, it gives a longer scan time. I hope this was uh, easy to understand. Last but not least, which is a very important thing to do. This is the part where people do it uh, a bit different, but I just want to show you how I do it. You can either use the scout mode, which uh, the sequence runs for itself for around 20 seconds or so. And then um, you will find uh, it will auto adjust itself in. Just uh, wait a little bit here. But what I usually do, I just start to scan the sequence and then I wait a little bit. Check the acceptance window up here, it's around 38. And then I take a closer look at the, this number. It says 125. And whenever it adjusts itself in, right now 136. What I do now is that I change the number to 136. I then stop the scan and I start a new one right away. So the reason for this is that you will get the high acceptance window from the start till the end. And I won't lose much time. All right, you can see the results here. So um, let's put this in 3D mode for further looking. You can also do uh, MIPFIN for enhancing the end results even more, as seen there. So take a closer look at the coronary artery there. So like I mentioned, you can do this scan in what place you want. Same approach goes around. Doesn't matter if you have the B0 shim first or then position in navigator and so on. The most important is that you do it in your own order. So you do it correctly from time to time. So you won't miss out a step. Actually planning the sequence from the start to the end doesn't take any long time. And the reason uh, it took long here now is that I broke uh, every step into um, details so for further explanation. But uh, doing this a couple of times and you will get it in your hands and it will be very easy. Well that's it. You can either get good results if you're doing it correctly, but you can also get suboptimal images if you're missing out a step or two. So heads up and remember that. Oh snap, I almost forgot to show you where you can find a sequence. Go to the Siemens tree. Then you have uh, the heart. Inside here you have a lot of possibilities. The localizer, this is the one the localizer which I used. And uh, for the 3D trifish, you have the angiography. You have the one in free breathing or in breath fold. I used the one in free breathing. But I also want to show you that in the breath fold you have these possibilities to do this as well. So for those who can find the sequence here, that means that you probably don't have the advanced cardiac package which is uh, needed being able to uh, have the sequence. Well, this is the end of my video. I really hope you enjoyed this video and please adapt what is useful for you and just discard what is not because uh, there are many ways to get to the same goal. Just remember that. And if you have any questions, do not be afraid to ask. Just pop the question in comments down below or just ask me personally. My mentor once said to me, if you have a question, probably the man next to you also wondering about the same thing. So no question or stupid, just ask and you will get an answer. For those who are at home, please enjoy your time with your friends and family. And for those who are at work, just happy clicking. So until next time, do not forget to subscribe, comment and like. I see you around. Peace out.